Welcome to number three of Shelly B Inside the Scene Drummer Bass Interviews. Today with me I've got Kenzie MC, Kent based MC. Hi Kenzie, welcome to Funky Essex and thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. So let's start from the beginning as we do. Uh, when did you first start MCing and have you always MCed to DB? Um, it's pretty much always been drum and bass. Um, I've always loved drum and bass. I started raving when I was 17. I started writing poetry when I was about six years old and I've always been into performing. I, I went to university to study drama and theatre. So I just kind of combined the things really. Um, it's been about two years since I've been emceeing. And so where does the name Kemsey come from? Uh, so Kemsey was actually my nickname in primary school. Um, and okay. because yeah, and because I started writing poetry in primary school, I sort of took it back to my roots of where I began doing everything. So I yeah. thought that would be a good way to give myself a name, and it's similar to my first name as well. So. Oh, okay. Do you have like a process you follow when you're writing your lyrics? So do you jot things down randomly, or do you sort of go out and try and get inspiration from somewhere? Like, how does it come to you writing your lyrics? Sometimes I get inspiration. I could see like. It sounds so silly, but a meme on Facebook, and I'll just I'll see that, and I think, oh, that's a good idea, that's a good topic, and I and I'll stem from that. Sometimes I get little one-liners that come to me, and I'll write them down, and I'll go back to them, and I'll work on them. But um, it always my main work stems from my poetry, so I'll start writing words down that rhyme with each other, and I'll try and come together with sentences and see what I come up with. Yeah. So do you like constantly sort of put notes in your phone, or have you got a little notebook? Or I've always got random notes in my phone, um, yeah. but I learnt the hard way. My phone broke, and I lost a lot of them, so I've started emailing them to myself. And I am trying to write more on paper because I think when you put pen to paper, it is more beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you ever get writer's block? I'm actually struggling with writer's block at the moment. Um, it's horrible. I said to myself this time round in the second lockdown because I'm off work that I was gonna be writing all of the time and I've written a little bit but when you've got writer's block I think sometimes you just have to accept it and if you try to force it it's not going to come out good you, you you know so um sometimes you just have to embrace it and just um sometimes I try writing to different genres that helps me hip hop okay. things like that yeah, um, and yeah. mix it up a little bit um liquid drum and bass I'll, I'll write too if I'm trying to write something that I'm really feeling um deep things about like I'll, I'll change it up depending on how I'm feeling mm. so what's your favorite um sub genre of DMV your favorite type of DMV that you like to um chat to so I've got a, a radio station that I perform on. I'm a resident of Code Red Radio Station. It's a Facebook radio station based in Gravesend. Um, and my show's every second Tuesday, 9 till 10.30. And I always invite um, DJs down and they all have different styles. I've performed to lots of different genres, um, liquid, jump up, rollers, 360. Um, and I've got different lyrics for different styles. I quite like to perform to 360 sets because then I can showcase, um, you know, I've got double time bars, I've got um, crowd hyper bars, um, bars for like the clever for wordplay, and I uh, and when I do a 360 set, I can really showcase the different variations of my my music. Yeah, you just answered my next two questions there because I was going <laughs> to ask how you adapt to styles and do you adapt your style from radio and playing out, which you've just answered. So. When you're when you're out to a crowd, you you slightly switch things up. Obviously, you've got to be a bit more hyper. You're there, you're, you're hosting as well as sort of yeah. showing off your lyrics, I suppose. Yeah, radio is different to performing to a crowd. It feels like forever since I've performed to a crowd. I'm really missing uh, performing out live. Uh, but I'm really grateful that we've got radio. Um, yeah, when you're at radio, you've got a chat room to interact with, but there's nothing that beats when you're in front of a live audience and you've got that crowd in front of you and you've got that real live energy, that there's nothing like it. Um, it's really nice to be able to interact with the crowd and, and I suppose, yeah, you're putting on more of a show uh, when you're live. Um, yeah. Uh, and I miss it. <laughs> you, you, I suppose you, you vibe off the energy. You do, yeah, you you've got, you up, exactly, yeah. the lights, uh, the, you know, the atmosphere. Um, everything, just everything about the rave scene. Yeah, during lockdown I think obviously a lot of DJs have done a lot of live streams and that and I, I've kind of felt a bit for the MCs because I've, I've felt like it's maybe not been as easy as them to, for them to do like live streams and that obviously you can if you've got a DJ that you're working mm. with but like there's been a lot of people struggling. Do you, how do you feel like in lockdown, how you've dealt with it? Radio's really saved me. I mean, the first time we was in a lockdown, we didn't have radio. And I remember coming back after five months, uh, I did a set with Elisa on my show and it was amazing. And uh, it was a really good experience and it, it was mad not doing radio. But I think uh, social media is a really good platform. People can post out uh, videos, uh, um, show showcasing their lyrics. Um, 
and and pe people have been practicing and working on projects and um, I think everyone's been struggling in different ways some people have really used lockdown uh, to motivate themselves and to push themselves other people have been struggling more with other things and um, for me I mean I've written um, a track that I've done with Elisa uh, called Finding Freedom which is actually based on addiction because uh, the first lockdown for me was I struggled um, I was battling addiction but um, towards the end of the lockdown I went into recovery and I'm now five months clean and sober. Wow that's amazing well done. Thank you. So what would you say to anyone out there that's currently struggling with addiction or with basically anything that they're struggling with in life? I would say um, if, if it's generalisation like reach out to people, tell people how you're feeling, um, it takes the power out of it. I think uh, when you get stuck inside your own head and, and you get isolated it's a, it's a horrible place to be in. Um, addiction unfortunately there's a lot of people out there that are struggling and they don't even realize that they're struggling there's such a stigma around addiction yeah. that people um you know they, they don't want to talk about it because they're they're in fear of being judged and addiction is a fear-based illness you know a lot of people think that unless you're on the streets and you're homeless and you're begging for money that that, that you're, you're not an addict but unfortunately the truth is that the disease of addiction centers in our minds and you know you if you use or drink alcohol or whatever your problem may be um, and when you start, you cannot stop or you find yourself drinking to blackout or spending all of your money or saying that you're going out on Friday night and you're rocking up on Monday morning and you have no control and you're using against your will, then you're probably an addict. And there are so many people out there that are suffering and I just want to help people and, and tell people, you know, that there is help out there. I work a 12-step programme um, and it, it saved my life and I want to be a po positive role model in drum and bass and, and tell people that, you know, you don't have to take drink and drugs to have a good time. If you do and, and you can control it and you haven't got a problem, then that's fine. Do do what you've got to do. But there are people out there that, that take it to the extreme. They have no control and they, they, they don't realise that there's help out there and that they're, they're, they're not alone. There are other people out there. Um, that can help them and I just want to put that word out there because I know what it's like to be in that place and if I can be honest and help someone then that's what I want to do. Wow that's amazing and um, I just want to thank you for sharing that with us we really appreciate that that's some really really good advice there. So switching it up a bit what's been your best gig you've played at and why? Oh, that's a tough one. There's two that uh, really stick in my mind. Well, you can say two. Uh, that's fine. <clears throat> one was um, at CT Fest in Canterbury. I got to go on after Wilkinson and MC Adapt, and that was an amazing experience. I was just like seeing all the crowd there, and like I love Wilkinson, and to then be going on after that was just such an amazing feeling. It, I felt like I needed to pinch myself. It was really surreal. Wow, I love it. Yeah, and the, the other one was actually, um, I got to perform at Small World Festival with Crops, Rama Beats and uh, MC Kiss. And that was an amazing experience because it was the first year in about 20 years that they showcased um, a drum and bass kind of set because it's not really a drum and bass kind of festival okay. it's kind of like a hippie festival bit right. of peace free love like it's yeah. amazing i really enjoyed it and um, when we got on that stage there was like five people in our tent and then out of nowhere there was just a whole crowd of people and they loved it and i think we really represented drum and bass in a positive way kiss is an amazing mc she's very um her content she, she spits to a lot of hip-hop and she talks about a lot of um stuff that's important and things that matter and i love working with her she's pushed me since i come in the scene she believed in me before i believed in myself and to be on that stage with her the sun was just setting it was six till seven and it was just an amazing experience to be there amongst people who weren't really there for drum and bass and to showcase it and yeah. be a part of it it was just an amazing it experience sounds it so you just made, mentioned another female mc Drum and bass is, especially for MCs, I feel like there's more female DJs now, but mm. for MCs, you're predominantly in a male-dominated field. Have you had any challenges because of that? I mean, there's always going to be that stigma and that females shouldn't be doing it and they can't do it as well as, as, as men. Um, and it is a male-dominated scene, um, but it's the females are really making movements right now, you know, and there is so much talent out there and I'm proud to be a female and I love doing what I do and you know I, I think that the the sexism is starting to fade out a little bit I think yeah. people are being a lot more accepting to females and people aren't even seeing it as you're a female they're seeing it as you're an artist and I think that's a really good movement for females and it's powerful yeah definitely so what would be your dream back-to-back -back, like MC and DJ oh wow you can um, do it separately if you like um, 
That's an amazing question because there's so much talent out there. Um, I think I'd love to work MC wise. I think just because I looked up to them growing up and I loved going out watching them raving, I'd love to work with IC3. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And Fanster as well. I think they're two artists that I've always. Funny, IC3 got a mention in the last interview. The popular guy. Yeah, he's he, lovely. He's such an approachable guy. He is. He's, he's, he's a right nice guy. People need more people like him in the scene. He's just very humble. Um, it's nice to everyone. Um, and he's just an all-round good guy and he's talented at what he does as well. Yeah, yeah. Who else do you look up to in the scene? Um, I look up to anyone that is um, spreading positive messages. There's um, a lady called Ruth Royals who, um, she's a female vocalist in drum and bass. She got nominated in the Drum and Bass Awards and she was doing a hashtag keep it real campaign about um, about like being who you are, your body, like you don't have to, you know, there's all that stigma in the media, yeah, like you should I've be skinny that. and all that. I've and um, that, yeah. I think I think people like her, she's a young girl trying to spread a positive message. Anyone that's out there trying to spread positivity in our society, I, I look up to. 100%. What's your plans for the future? Obviously, I, I know we're in lockdown, but like, let's just say we're coming out soon. Let's look on a positive. I hope so. <laughs> What's your plans? What, what, what have you got up your sleeve? What would you like to achieve? Um, so it's under wraps at the moment. I can't say who, but um, there is Ooh, a teaser, teaser. yeah teaser. <laughs> there is um, a producer. He's a well-known producer, and he's an amazing DJ in drum and bass. And I'm very excited about doing a track with him. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And there's also a mixtape that I'm supposed to be working on with uh, three MCs. Um, one of them is the one of the biggest up and coming female MCs in drum and bass, and um, there's another MC that's uh, well known in drum and bass. He's been voted for in the drum and bass awards in the past, um, so I'm looking forward to that. I just got to get out of this writer's block, but um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to things going back to normal. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm really grateful that I've still got radio, but um, yeah, just being back in, I can't wait to be back in the dances and just having that real live energy and being amongst the the ravers and the atmosphere. I'm just really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. We'll make sure you send us them dubs as soon as they're ready. <laughs> we'll Funky do. Funky Essex, we like to play things first. Yeah, and um, if anyone wants to follow me on my social media, um, it's facebook.com forward slash KemsyMC, K-E-M-Z-I-E, and uh, the same on Instagram, um, at KemsyMC. Um, I'm in the middle of sorting out my mix cloud at the moment, but that link will be up there soon. And um, yeah, if anyone ever has any questions um, about addiction or how I got sober or needs any help, please feel free to drop me a message. Um, I'm more than happy to help anyone. Kemsy, you've been amazing. What a great interview. Just want to say thank you so much for doing this for us for Funky Essex. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Funky Essex. Not my time for the hurt.